everyone. Today we're going to get into pheromones and fragrance and whether science can help you seduce with scent. Um, but before we get into that, if you're new here, my name is Ashley. I moved to Paris five years ago to pursue my dream of becoming a perfumer and I ended up studying at Isipka where I graduated with my Masters of Science in Scent Design and Creation and I now work as an apprentice perfumer at Givadon where I create fragrances and learn to create fragrances fragrances. If you're interested in fragrance information and fragrance reviews, consider subscribing to the channel. So pheromones and fragrance. This is a very interesting topic. I completely get it. I think a lot of people use scent as a weapon to attract the sex that they're interested in. Um, and so why not use scientific research to give you a little extra boost, right? I myself, um, once wore a pheromone fragrance pretty much on accident. I didn't actually find out there were pheromones in it until I was doing research for this video, but it was Paris Hilton by Paris Hilton, and this is one of my signature scents in high school. And despite wearing it pretty solidly for a few years, I can't say that this fragrance got me any more compliments or attention than any other fragrance. But let's kind of look into the claims of pheromone fragrances, why they're so popular, why there seems to be some kind of success at least, right? I mean, people wouldn't be purchasing these fragrances and I mean, they're one of the best selling types of fragrances on Amazon. So let's kind of do a deep dive here. So pheromones are supposed to be these molecules that when someone smells them and they're emanating off of you, it makes you more attractive. It's supposed to um, increase arousal and all of these things to do with physical attraction. And, you know, there have been some studies that, you know, like people of attraction between humans due to pheromones, depending on many different factors. And there's been a lot of like PR stunts, like choosing a date based off the smell of their t-shirt, all that kinds of things. The results are inconclusive with those kinds of pheromones. Um, where pheromones actually really work is in insects. So there, there's been numerous studies isolating single molecules that these insects and bugs are emitting, and then they use that information to kind of like, um, impact the travel of these bugs and the location of these bugs. So using the pheromones and their attracting and repelling powers to perhaps dissuade bugs from being in a certain area where there might be crops and things of that nature. So not as sexy, I mean, to me, you know, that's not a super sexy thing. In bigger animals, they have really never been able to isolate a single molecule related with pheromones. That's not to say that animals don't use pheromones. It just means that us as humans haven't been able to identify the exact molecule that's making all of these interactions happen. And it's different molecules for different animals. So even different insects have different molecules that attract them. They have found one molecule in mice that helps attract other mice. Again, it's not really useful to us as humans, okay? And then getting into bigger animals, uh, maybe you've heard of like pheromones for dogs and cats to kind of appease them during stressful situations like potty training, fireworks, that type of thing. But even then, the studies are really inconclusive and really shaky despite there being products on the market. That's, again, there's a lot of... Um, talk about these things, there's a lot of reviews, and hey, if that, that works for you and your dog or your pet, that is great. It's just that even for something like this, there there's not a lot of information, and these are like, you know, kind of less complex animals, you know, insects and mice, than humans. So, if in humans, we haven't been able to isolate a molecule that is related to attraction within humans, it kind of makes you wonder, what is the pheromone that they're putting in the fragrance, right? So there's no solid science of any single molecule um, that by itself will make, will even ignite arousal in a human. And so then what is it? You know, again, maybe we know that if you put sweat some near someone, it can increase arousal, but again, 
they can't isolate that. They can't find out what it is in the sweat. And um, even with the, the dog collars for appeasement of these animals, that's like a mix of kind of like a lot of different molecules trying to kind of figure out a blend that might work because even in dogs and cats and these things, they haven't isolated a single molecule. Um, so then how come that these fragrances kind of work, right? So they have really good reviews. People say that they get a lot of compliments on them. Um, so what is it? Some people say like, this is my most complimented fragrance. A lot of the times, um, and this is true of many pheromone fragrances, and honestly, sometimes a lot of fragrances on the market in general, is that when they're looking for a new fragrance, they look to the most popular fragrances to have ever existed. For example, with my you know beloved high school fragrance, Paris Hilton by Paris Hilton, if you look on the Fragrantica page, you'll see it has um, a lot of um, comparisons to Ralph by Ralph Lauren. And so, and that was a huge fragrance in his time, a big kind of mall mainstream designer fragrance that did massively well. Um, and so obviously people liked it and it gets compliments. And that's true of, you know, the men's and women's pheromone fragrances. A lot of these are not, you know, huge brands putting out these fragrances. Um, I don't really know what perfume houses they go to to get these fragrances made, but generally they're gonna be kind of dupes or similar or types of big popular fragrances that people just generally love. So of course you're gonna get compliments on them. It's not to say that they're not, they're probably not bad fragrances. They're probably pleasant and very nice smelling and I'm sure they're picking the fragrances that have performed the best really on consumer tests that are meant to please the largest amount of people. At least I would hope that they're at least doing that. Um, but it's probably not the pheromones if you are getting compliments on those fragrances that are giving you the compliments on those fragrances. And even if you're like, okay, well, at least it smells good. Yes, but chances are you could have just gotten the original fragrance, um, which maybe has better projection, longevity. I don't know. I hear the consistency of these things can be quite oily um, because they're done without alcohol. Um, I don't know if that's too market to pretty much just anyone because, um, for example, some people just don't like alcoholic fragrance. It can be harsh on the skin or it's against their religious practices. So I think the reason that they do it in oil, this is just a speculation, is just so that it can attract the largest market possible. Um, but again, it's just not the pheromones in these fragrances that are likely what's causing the compliments. Um, so yeah, I think that's really important to consider. So if you do really like um, getting compliments on your fragrance or just like mass appeal fragrances, buy the best sellers, you know, do a quick Google search for your country because best seller is really very country to country. Find out what the best selling fragrance is in your country and that's likely to get just as much compliments as, um, or watch some of my videos. I hope you guys found this video interesting. Let me know, have you tried pheromone fragrances? Um, did you feel like they worked for you? And what fragrance is your biggest compliment getter? Because I'm definitely gonna do a video about that soon. All right, everyone, bye.